Speaking of Colby, what have you seen from him and what has stood out so far to you in fall camp? Well, there's a couple of things. One, you know, you know, I, I think I mentioned this about Colby Richardson. Um, he uh, physically, he came in and put on about 20 pounds. And, and I think that that really has allowed him to compete at a high level. You know, he was, you know, somewhere in the 170 range, 168, 172, and he's, he's over 190 pounds. So I think, you know, coming in and, and really taking advantage of the nutrition and the weight training and conditioning put him, you know, he's obviously a very gifted athlete, but then putting on that strength and, and uh, taking, you know, our nutrition program to a, a new level for him, one that he, you know, probably never had before. And he's got elite speed. Um, he's a veteran player, and all those things have come together. Uh, he's extremely committed. Uh, the players really enjoy him. Um, he's a really good teammate, and it's, it's good to see him have some great success. Yeah, how much more sample size do you need to see out of the quarterbacks to kind of like, okay, this is who I'm starting. Is it almost there? Or is it yeah, easy? no, I, I think we're pretty much we're, we're, we're closing in on, on making a decision. Um, you know, the, the two of them are outstanding quarterbacks. You guys probably, if you were voting as a group in here, it, it might be, you know, a s split in, in this room. Um, it's, it's pretty close. Um, so I, I think you could probably understand why, for us, you know, we're not jumping out there giving you a quarterback because it is, they're, they're both fine quarterbacks and it's, and it's that close. But we're going to have to, we're going to have to make a decision here in the next few days. Hey, Coach, here in the back, uh, Malik Neighbors and the yeah. matchup problems he can give defenses and just seeing him in practice, it seems yeah. like he's going to have a great year. What, what are you seeing out of him? You know, I think the first thing is, for me, from the spring to the summer workouts and to now, he's, he's obviously stronger physically and – his maturity is the thing that stands out. And, and when I say maturity, I mean he's the same guy every day. Um, he comes to practice prepared. He practices hard. Um, he comes with a, a, the right attitude. He thinks the right way. And, and that's maturity, right? And I thought at times in the spring he was a bit up and down. He'd have a good day and maybe not so much you'd see him. Um, but his consistency and his approach and the way he thinks and the way he's attacked practices, he's going to be, uh, I, I think, um, a guy that we're all going to enjoy watching play. At that wide receiver position, now that Jack Besh and Chris Hilton seem like they're maybe fully uh, yeah. back from their injuries, kind of how does that shape what you have in the room and uh, how the rotation is going to end up looking? Well, you're going to see them all play. We want to play fast. We want to play with some tempo. Um, you know, we're going to push the ball down the field. So those guys are going to have to, you know, stay fresh. We want to be able to attack defenses with, you know, six, seven, you know, deep at that position is, is going to serve us well. So, um, you know, I think they all serve a, an important role. You know, um, Karen Lacey is going to be involved in that as well. He's, he's had a couple of... Uh, you know, really good scrimmages for us. Um, you know, Drake Dinkins has been really solid for us and, and, and consistent. So, you know, I think all of those guys are going to play a, a significant role. And, and I think it's, you know, to have that kind of depth, um, we're, we're going to use it as a strength of ours by really, you know, keeping those guys fresh and, and rotating them into the game. Hey, Coach Kelly, right here in the middle. Yes, with such a close battle at the quarterback position, is there a chance we would see both guys against Florida State, or are you just going to ride with QB1 and, and that's it? You know, I, I, don't, I don't know that I have an answer for that question as much as I think we need to make the decision, um, start who it is that we, we feel you know, gives us the best chance to win, but, but know that, that both of them are – quarterbacks that can help us, you know, uh, win the SEC. So however that plays out, it's, it's really hard for me to answer that question, you know, looking forward. But I think in the moment, um, we, we feel really good about both of those quarterbacks.
Um, I'm trying to be evasive, but it's just a fact. Ryan, uh, obviously, when you think of defense, the days of having a lot of three and outs in the game are, are, are long gone. What, what do you what do you value from your defense? Is it, do you, what what have uh, you know disruptive plays, you yeah. know, sacks and turnovers? How much does that count for you? Yeah, with with what defenses are and how how is this defense able to do that? Well, there's three things. Um, one, you know, you you, you definitely want to get um, offenses. Um, in a position where, you know, they're they're against the chains. In other words, they're they're off schedule. Uh, that's important. When you, when you get offenses, you know, in second and fifteen or, you know, second and long, um, you know, you get them off schedule. That's important. So those are tackles for loss, you know, and and we believe that we can do that with the disruptive front that we have. The second thing is taking the football away. Um, whether that be through, you know, pressure on the quarterback, interceptions, strips, those are things that we work on every day. And then the third down defense, the ability to get off the field on third down. So, you know, to me, uh, when you look at the, the nature of your defense, um, you know, those three things between the 20s, uh, are how you really evaluate a successful defense. Um, you know, getting offenses off schedule, um, taking the football away, and being really good on third down, getting off the field. You know, we, we, we obviously have to be great in, in uh, the red zone and, and forcing field goals over touchdowns, but that's another, you know, that's a whole other, you know, defensive structure for us because you get into different fronts and coverages and such. But that would be my answer. Coach, I hate to beat the quarterback horse to death, but with these two guys, and I know you said that you've wanted to make a decision within the next couple of days, do you want to give them a full week of preparation, the starter, or do you see this bleeding into next week, the competition? No, we'll, we'll, we'll have it wrapped up by we're, – we're going to start to exchange scout teams probably Friday of this week. Um, we'll get a peek. We'll, we'll use Friday – Saturday and next Tuesday as the three bonus days uh, for Florida State. And then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, again, another three days for Florida State, which would be your normal Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in a typical week. So as, as, as long as, as we've got our decision made by, you know, the end of the weekend here and then we make some kind of announcement, um, you know, whether it's, you know, Monday or Tuesday of next week, we, we feel like we'll be in a pretty good position. Yeah, hey, Coach. I, I know it's only been a couple of days since we last talked to you, but I know you mentioned there's about seven or eight guys on the offensive line that are competing for yep. those starting spots. Just how, how much do you think it benefits having just a few extra guys to, that, you know, you could throw in there as potential starters or as heavy rotational pieces early in the season? And do you, do you feel like you guys are narrowing in, I guess, on a potential starting lineup there? We're we're still moving some pieces around. Um, you know, I can tell you that you know the the good part is Garrett Dellinger is really settled in at the center position. With I think, you know, it was it last week where you know I was pretty vocal about the snaps. He's really settled in nicely since that day and and has taken ownership at that position and has been extremely consistent. So we feel really good there at the center position. Um, you know, we've been working Bradford at some, some guard position, but as you know earlier, he's played a lot of tackle. So that's given Cam Wire some opportunity there. I think what we're looking for is some key backup situations. Um, I think we've got a pretty good sense of the, the five, six guys, and now it's about getting that seventh, seventh, maybe eighth guy. Um, but we're, we're, I think we've, we feel pretty comfortable with um, knowing that we've got seven, eight guys, and, and that's going to be our rotation. You're, you're somebody I know who likes process and organizational structure and things like that. I guess just where do you think this team is right now for the season? How close is it to where you normally like a team to be? Today was our best day in terms of playing with speed, practicing with a purpose, um, understanding. You got the sense today that they were getting ready to play a game. Um, it was clean, it was uh, efficient, um, 
you know, you had defensive linemen running all the way across the field, you know, pursuing the football. You, it just didn't feel like a check the box camp day, you know, where sometimes you kind of get in the doldrums of camp. You know, you could sense today. And they did it in the manner that I like to see practice being run. Um, so, um, you know, we are who we are. I mean, there's nobody else coming through the doors. You know, this is the team we have. Um, and, and I like their development. Um, so I would say that we're on schedule for the preparation part and we're moving towards, you know, uh, really focusing on our opponent, Florida State, here in the next couple of days. And, and, and I expect us to be in a really good position physically. Um, it's gone really well, knock on wood, where we haven't had any major injuries. Um, we've been very, I think, intentional about um, them being fresh. Uh, so all, all signs point to being on, on the right path towards you know, preparation being uh, where it needs to be for Florida State. Coach, yeah. um, you've worked with Mike Denbrock before. I'm wondering, like, how has, have you seen his offensive philosophy change now that you've reunited after his time at Cincinnati? Um, I just think that, you know, he's always been um, a really smart, uh, intuitive play caller. That's why I've asked him to, to be my play caller here at the, you know, the the top of the top and you know we're this is LSU right we're here to win a national championship so I'll I get a chance to pick the best play callers in the country I think he's the best play caller and I think he's I've been together with him for a long time I just think he's uh, intuitive he's smart um, he knows football um, he knows the offense that I like to run and what I like to do so that's obviously really key because our conversations are are you know, on point. Um, I don't have to explain a lot to him. He can go and go, I know what you're looking for there. Let's go ahead and do that. So um, I, I don't know that there's been, you know, this, you know, epiphany of he's, you know, changed as much as he likes to do what I like to do. We want to control the line of scrimmage. Uh, we want physicalness within the offensive structure. We want to utilize a tight end and three wide receivers. And, and, and we want to push the ball down the field. We want, we want big chunk plays. And um, I think that that's kind of stayed consistent with, um, with his philosophy. Right here. Um, what have you seen from Mason Smith so far? Um, you know, obviously, the physical tools are there, right? And, you know, he brings that, um, that physical presence at the defensive line position. He wants to get better um, every day. There's, there's definitely um, a desire to want to be the best. Uh, he sits in the front row. He's taking notes. He's engaged. This isn't a guy that's sleepy-eyed, sitting in the back of the room, you know, hey, I've arrived. Um, so, you know, that to me stands out. Um, and he knows he's got a lot to work on. He wants to be a better pass rusher. Um, he plays with a lot of emotion. Um, and, and he's, I don't think he's even reached his, you know, his ceiling. You know, he's, he's working on getting better every day. Just um, kicker, that's been an open spot. Any closer to finding who you all might like to go with it there? Um, you know, I think, I think right now, um, Ramos is, is probably in the lead at that position with Bramlett. Those, those are our two uh, that I would say right now are uh, a little bit out in, in front. Um, haven't made a decision on kickoff right now. That's still um, a competitive situation. Um, but I, I wouldn't say that that's a um, – I'd say Bramlett has probably won the punting job. But I'd say um, – I'd say we're still in a competitive situation, but Ramos is probably a little bit ahead right now in the kicking situation. Hey, Coach. Billy Embody with On3. Um, you mentioned staying fresh for the opener. How did you guys manage tackling throughout the entirety of fall camp and, and trying to you know, 
go all the way, but also keep guys safe at the same time? Yeah, so, you know, a lot of that is regulated now through, you know, the new rules. So I think what's really been helpful is the sp spider pads, which allows you to, to get into good fit positions and play fast but not take guys down. And then when you get your opportunity to tackle, um, you just have to take advantage of those particular days. It's much like, you know, when, when you have those long layoffs for bowl games, you have to tackle. Um, you know, you, this is a lot different because you, you have 28, 29 practice, you know, opportunities and you can space them out. So it's not like, you know, the, the bowl game where you got to go, you know, you got to throw them in quickly and get those tackling opportunities in. This is much, much better. It's spaced out. And, and you can be, I think, a lot more safe with the tackling opportunities across the board. Thank Great. Thank you.